Hi everybody and welcome. It's me, Kenneth from ACM Explained, and I'm joined by the eminent Michael Murray. We're here in Dublin for the conference, and uh, today we have a treat because Michael is going to tell us. Uh, he's been doing a lot of presentations in in Ireland, and Michael is a really, uh, should I say, unique and a very very valuable viewpoint on, um, I say, the la the rungs of the ladder. Um, in ACIM, we talk about the illusion and how um, we think we are here in this dream world, dream state. And Michael has had a lot of experiences which have helped him to clarify um, the various levels in this illusion. And I won't say further than that because I, I'm sure it's, it's, it's more than I can say in a few sentences. So without further ado, yeah. Michael, hi. Um, basically, kind of, uh, the course teaches us that uh, we're really not here. Okay? And that's the truth of what the course is really teaching. But because we believe that we're here, we need a way home. Okay? And to find the way home, we must kind of first understand how we got here because how we arrived here is basically through the ego as our teacher. So basically, everything the ego has made, the Holy Spirit is going to use now against the ego itself and take us home. So people might say, well, you know, it's a, it's a case that we don't really need to know this. Mm -hmm. But the whole origins, the foundations of the whole ego, bis the, the whole ego thought system yeah. is, in the separation, okay? So if we can understand, okay, how the ego developed the thought system, we can see the defenses that are built up in that thought system, okay, and we can look about taking those defenses down. The Course calls them uh, the blocks to awareness, yep. okay? So there are three fundamental blocks that's there that the ego uses, and it's built into space-time, which is sin, guilt, fear, mm -hmm. okay? We feel sinful in the past, we feel guilty in the present, and we're very fearful of the future. Yeah. So we're going to see how, basically, how that works into what the Course calls the fall, or the separation, yep. okay? And that, what leads that onto that afterwards then, right, is uh, the ego needs to reinforce those three blocks. Yep. It needs to protect them, yes. defend against them. And basically, how it uses that is basically through projection. Mm -hmm. Okay, fragmentation. And then uh, the final defense, the final uh, protection that the whole ego thought system has is basically right for it to get us out of the mind, to forget that we are a mind, mm -hmm. okay, and for us to believe that we're a body. And basically, we can't change our mind if we don't even remember that we are a mind. So that was just a general. Uh, overview of how we're going to go through this thought system of the egos and basically then we're just going to look at ascension you know the way home okay so it's important you know to start off like uh, the course the course takes us through all of the separation but also Jesus describes in the course the pre-separation state mm -hmm. you know what who we really are yes you know in the course so it's important that we start there uh, a lot of people start with the dream Right. Okay, uh, but I think it's important that we go a step back in time to to the reality of who we are. Exactly, which is not really in the past. We talk about pre-separation, but it's just, that's just a metaphor, really, because yeah. it's unchanged. That's right? correct. It's timeless. That's, that's correct. That's correct. Because basically, to you know, it's a case that uh, in the pre-separation state, you know. People who are doing the course, and I, I go to a lot of talks and groups, and people think for some reason that we're here to learn something, we're here to, you know, be perfect and all of this, like, you know, but the course is very, very, very clear on this, that we are already perfect. We believe that we're imperfect. That's one of the problems. Mm -hmm. So basically, in the pre-separation state of heaven, we are non-conscious state of being. That's our true reality, mm -hmm. okay? We don't think, mm -hmm. okay? There's nothing to think of. There's nothing to be conscious of. Right. To be conscious of something, okay, there has to be a separation. There has to be something to be conscious of. Yes. But if heaven is a state of pure oneness, then everything is, yes. is, is uh, you are everything. Right. So there's nothing outside of yourself. Yes. So it's very important to, you know, the ego could make the statement, I think, therefore I am. Yep. Well. 
Christ or true identity could make the statement, I think, therefore I'm not. Mm. Okay? So therefore, Christ does not have to think. Right. Okay, only the ego thinks. So non-conscious, it's not unconscious. It's not unconscious. Right, because if you say conscious and unconscious, we're still in that duality. Yes. The non-conscious is outside yes. of that. Yeah, we'll talk, we'll, paradigm, I'll show you a few yeah. diagrams later on on the uh, conscious, unconscious mind. But this, their levels within the dream. Because mm. what, we, what the ego has done, when, when the ego put us into the body, when the ego uh, drove us from the mind or when we chose to leave the mind, okay, that became the unconscious part. We forgot, we denied that we were a mind. Okay, we became a body. So the sin, guilt and fear become the unconscious part of our mind, the denial, mm. of course. And that's, uh, you know, what the Course is teaching us now to deal with. Yep. So basically, this symbol here, as you can see, there's absolutely nothing within it, okay? It's, a, there's, it's a, just a pure sea of pure oneness, and it's limitless, and that's the state of heaven. Okay. Now, in this state, okay, what happened next, we'll just move to the next diagram, was the dream of separation. And this is where the Course states that the birth of consciousness that it was in the dream of consciousness, right, that we became self-aware, okay? Now, you know, we only have free will mm -hmm. in a state of consciousness, okay? Because we can choose what to be conscious of, mm -hmm. okay? And at, at, before this state, we were not self-aware. We were not aware of God as someone in, outside of us, mm -hmm. okay? We basically our true identity is within the mind of God. Right. Okay. This is what the cause calls the tiny man idea. Yes. So basically, what we would our first uh, level of consciousness, the first thought that came into us is we seen God outside of ourselves. Okay. We seen a difference. Now the course is very clear also that there's no difference between us and God. God gave us everything, everything that God had to give to us, but we seen one difference, and the one difference was that God was self-created. God created himself, and therefore he was our creator. And we didn't like that. We wanted what God had. We seen a lack in us immediately. And that lack that we seen, the ego was introduced. And the ego says, I can fill that lack, okay? I can give you what you require. What Jesus describes in the Course is, we ask God of something that a loving father couldn't give. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's something that we ask God of with specialness. And again, that goes against the laws of heaven. Because to be special, you have to be special over something. And in a state of oneness, you can't be anything more special. Everything is a quality. Everything is unified. Yep. So we began this dream in consciousness. And we fell asleep. The Christ fell asleep. And this was the introduction of the split mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. This was the introduction of duality. So on one side... We, we, we were listening to the ego's voice, and the ego was promising us wonderful things, okay? And we would look around and we would look at the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit says nothing. So again, we look at the ego, and the ego says, I can give you specialness. I can give you self-creation. I can give you God of your own word. I can give you basically anything that you want. Mm -hmm. And again, we looked at the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit did not reply. What is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the communication between God and ourselves. Okay, now, before consciousness was introduced, mm -hmm. that communication was direct between ourselves and God. Okay, mm -hmm. once consciousness was introduced, and we seen God outside of ourselves, we needed some form of communication. And as Jesus describes in the Course, when the consciousness was introduced, the atonement plan was set in place, right. and the Holy Spirit is in charge of the atonement plan. So the Holy Spirit basically is a communication between God and ourselves, yep. okay? But again, the reason why the Holy Spirit does not reply is because the Holy Spirit sees the ego as pure illusion. For him to reply to the ego's promises, okay, would be to make the ego real. So therefore, give it, you know, validity. Yes, but it would also reinforce in our minds 
the day you go Israel. Mm. And the separation did actually happen. And, uh, and this has happened. So the whole course is teaching us that the separation never happened because yeah. it can never happen. That's the atonement principle. So, but we didn't see that at the time. We were just looking for specialness. Mm -hmm. We wanted to do this on our own. Why? Okay. Because basically, God, we wanted this identification. We wanted the specialness in heaven that God wouldn't give. Okay, because we see in ourselves when we were listening to the ego's voice that if you stay here, okay, you're going to be a servant to God. Okay, I can give you a world where you're your own God. Mm -hmm. So that was the promise that we fell for for the ego. Okay, so at that moment we looked at the ego. We finally, for the final time, we looked at the Holy Spirit. Nothing to say, and the ego. We looked at the ego and we chose the ego. We says, yeah, let's go with that. Okay, so. The next level now is the first dream. Remember, this is the first dream, okay? And now we're in a dream within a dream, okay? And in this dream, we, we fall asleep here now again within this dream. And this is our dream of separation. This mm -hmm. is where it began. And this is the consciousness level of this, okay? So this is the reality of us choosing the oh. ego. So this is a bit like the you know we talk about the tip of the iceberg and the yeah. the mass of the iceberg. Yeah. This is this is like yeah. that, yeah. So in every level of the dream that we go through here, okay, we're going to be creating our own reality for that wish, for that desire. Okay? Mm -hmm. So basically what happens is now we awaken here. This is the one sun awakening. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Was it the other way around? Because then this is the this is the, the part which is unconscious and this is the part that's conscious yes through the consciousness we go into straight into unconsciousness right okay one moment we're conscious we're a conscious dreaming here okay yeah. once we choose the ego yeah okay this becomes unconscious and this now becomes our consciousness okay okay this is our reality right we fall asleep here after choosing choosing the ego and now we become uh, this is our this reality is now. Right. so what yeah. we what happens is now we become conscious that we're separated we actually believe now that we have separated from God, mm -hmm. okay? And we don't like it. Mm -hmm. and in fact, the ego comes into a little voice within us because remember, the ego's got a plan here, mm -hmm. but it doesn't tell us what the plan is. Mm -hmm. Do you know? So we're kind of just following step by step, but the ego knows exactly what the full plan is within here. Yeah. So basically what happens is now we are separated and the ego tells us, right, you are outside of heaven. Mm. And we go, yeah, and all of a sudden it says, do you know what the consequences of that? You have broken oneness. Mm. You have broken the laws of heaven. Mm. You have broken the laws of God. If heaven is a state of pure oneness, mm. and you have broken those laws and you're outside of it, mm. that means God's dead. You have sinned against heaven. You have sinned against God. And now, how do you feel about that? Right, you've done something very, very, You have very, done very something, bad. yes. And the next thing, as cause and effect teaches us, Sin is the cause, and the natural effect of sin right. is guilt. And we feel absolutely horrible what right. we've done. <coughs> guilt is but feeling bad for something that you've yes. done. Because basically, like, you know, what the, what the ego has convinced us now that we are, this is our reality. And yeah. we believe it because we're unconscious now that we actually chose this and we can choose against it. The separation didn't become real until we accepted guilt into our minds. Mm -hmm. Okay, once we believed the ego that we had separated, the guilt was there, we could still have chosen against it, we could have still turned around and said, uh-uh, you know, but we were still after this specialness. We were still after this creation of our own world to be our own God. Mm -hmm. And in that instant, we chose guilt, and we accepted the guilt into our mind. That is the moment that the separation became real. At that moment, set into a chain of events where it had to go the whole way now down into the bottom of the ladder okay because there was no way that we can correct this in the mind once we accepted it in okay so what happens is right we're sitting there and we're feeling so sinful we're feeling so guilty and we go back to the ego and we say to the ego listen I, you promised me specialness you promised me a world and you promised me that i could be self-creator all you've given me is pain sin and guilt Ego says, don't worry about it, I'll get rid of your sin, I'll get rid of your guilt. Okay, mm. 
right? And uh, uh, we say, right, what do you want us to do? Go back to sleep, okay? And when you wake up, you'll be in a new reality, you'll be in a new world, and you'll have no sin, and you'll have no guilt. We say, okay, let's do that, all right? So, we go back to sleep for the second, a dream within a dream within a dream, okay? So this is us back to sleep again. Now we become unconscious of the sin and the guilt, and we wake up and we're split into two, okay? What the ego does is introduce projection, okay? And what happens in projection is what, what he does is he promised he would get rid of the sin and the guilt. So what he does, he takes the sin and the guilt from here and projects it on to the other split off part Tell of the Tell us a little bit about projection. This is obviously a psychological term from, from <coughs> right? I mean, what, what is projection? Projection basically means that anything that you deny in your mind, okay, mm -hmm. you're going to project that out, mm -hmm. okay? So everything that I don't like about myself, okay, I project it onto somebody. Right. So what happens is I, I meet you instant, right? We meet, we're friends, okay? And I meet you out some night. And you're doing the most annoying things to me, okay? And I think, I can't be near Kenneth Bach. You're not talking just, about real life, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be near that man. He just does so many annoying things like, you know. And I go away and I blame you then for being an annoying person and you do all these things that I don't like. The reason why... I don't like them, it's because I have secretly taken them from within myself and projected them onto you. That is what happens in here. We hated the sin and the guilt that we had within ourselves. We went to the ego and the ego says, right, I'll get rid of those, okay? What it does is we split and we project it then onto it. So the son here becomes the perfect victim yep. and this is the victimizer because yep. this is the sinful, guilty one. This is the son now who has broken heaven, destroyed, God destroyed oneness, and this is the one that God's going to come after and punish. Mm. Okay, but there's a big problem with projection. Okay, projection is clearly an attack. Mm -hmm. Okay, now when you attack someone, you're always very fearful of them coming back. Mm. You're fearful of an attack back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happens is, right, we, pro we project the sin and the guilt onto this person, but what happens now is the introduction of fear. Okay, the third foundation stone of the ego thought system, sin, guilt, fear. Okay, and this is the introduction of the victim, victimizer. Mm -hmm. And this all occurs in the second level or the second dream within a dream. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you even look at the Bible, okay, you could say this is Adam. Okay, and Adam went to God and told him that he was lonely. Okay, and he wanted some female company. Okay, so God takes a part of Adam, which is his rib, all right, and he makes Eve. This is what we have done here. We have split ourselves into two. Now, in the Garden of Eden, when God, right, when Adam eats of the tree, okay, God comes and he says to Adam, why did you eat of the tree, Adam? Okay, mm -hmm. and what does Adam do? He projects it onto Eve. He says, it was the woman. It was Eve. She taught me to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. The next thing, God goes to Eve and says to Eve, right, why did you make Adam eat of the tree? And Eve says, it wasn't me, it was the serpent. Mm. Projection must extend itself. In heaven, love extends itself. Projection must extend itself. Now, there's a big problem with this because there's only two. Okay, so this son projects onto this son, but this son now is in a state of sin and guilt and needs help right. because the ego. Because this is he's he's yes. yeah. He's a, he, he's this guy is a mini. This yes. Guy. This is this is this is this guy to hear like and the split off. This beget, this becomes the innocent now of the sin and guilt, but becomes very fearful. Mm -hmm. Okay, the two are one. Okay, but look how clever the ego was. The ego introduced fear, introduced victim victimizer, and also introduced projection by us following the ego who was going to help us, mm -hmm. right? So every time the ego helps us, it's a really upside down perception sure. where it's not really helped. So we're sitting here now, right? And again, there's nowhere else to project. And at the, mo at the ego's biggest fear here is that both sons, right, will look at this and say, hold on a minute, I can't stand this sin guilt. The only one can say, I can't stand this fear. Mm -hmm. They could choose against it. Okay, mm -hmm. so the ego needs to again fragment, split, split. So 
Eagle comes in again and says, okay, listen, I'll help you with this. Back to sleep again, mm -hmm. okay? We're going to another reality and I'll take care of your projection. Okay, so we go on to the next level. The third dream, okay? We go back to sleep again here, okay? And the next thing what happens is the two suns split fragments into billions and billions and billions and billions of uh, 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 different, different entities, parts yeah. and entities, okay? So you can see here, one into the two into the fragmentation. And is that what, is that the Big Bang? Basically, no, the Big Bang hasn't happened yet. This is still occurring within the mind, okay? So what I have to say on those two, Ken, these are all states of mind. Yes, it's an abs very abstract kind of thing yes. going on. You know, going on. So even heaven is a state of mind. Yes. So it's all different realities. Now, this is where the one sleep is all happening. So this sleep is sitting on top of this sleep here. This sleep is sitting on top of it. But we perceive that it's outside. Mm. So in reality, everything is happening in this one dream. Mm. But we perceive, right, that we're in all these different levels. So different. like Inception. Yes, uh, yes, Inception. exactly. So what happens now is, right, the ego's final uh, coup d'etat is coming because the ego's plan all along was to get us out of the mind, to get us fragmented, to get us split into billions and billions of places that we couldn't put ourselves back together again, that we would see each other, every, see each other and everybody around us as separate, mm -hmm. okay? Because uh, basically the more fragmented that we become, the tougher the job it is going to put it all back into one unity, one sonship. Yep. So the ego says, okay, I promised you the world, where you're going to be your self-creator, okay? You're going to be your own god, and you're going to be uh, basically your own uh, master and commander, okay? So I'm just going to put you back to sleep now again, all right? And this is the final time I'm going to put you back to sleep. And we say, great, at last, okay? Yeah. So we go back to sleep again. And here we have the fourth sleep, okay? And these are all within sleeps. They're all within dreams. A dream within a dream within a dream within a dream. Mm. And if you looked at Inception, it is remarkable how close it is to Inception, right? But here we are, and this is the Big Bang, okay? This is the physical universe, the world, and the final split that the ego comes up with is the body. So we, right now, wake up, we're born, we're born into a body, mm. okay? And we think, our parents created us. And we're in a total state of unconscious here. This is the mind again, remember, where the sleep occurs. Mm -hmm. So we're waking up and we just believe that yes. we're victims of the world. We're totally identifying with something very limited. Yes. Something very physical. This, yes. This, this, this wall of flesh that oh, yeah. we have very limited control outside of. Even. Yeah. And, you know, it's so uh, clever of an idea because I speak to people and I chat to them that this is not their reality, okay? Mm. This is not real, okay? And they say, of course it is. And I say, okay, I agree with you. Tell me why you think this is your reality, okay? And they say, because I can touch it, I can feel it, I can smell it, I can hear it, mm. and I can taste it. And I say, great, but who's telling you all of those? And they say, I am. And I went, oh no, wait a minute. Are you saying you're a body? Of course the body's saying that. But have you ever had the thought that you're not a body? Mm -hmm. What if the body was an illusion confirming other illusions? Have you ever thought about that? And everybody says no. So we are basing our reality upon an illusion, mm -hmm. thinking that the illusion of the body is our reality. Right. So assumed. Yes. Assumed, yeah, yes. Many things. Yeah. And one of the reasons behind that assumption comes from our doctrine into religion at very early age, especially here in Ireland, because we're growing up that God created the world in six days, mm. that God created the body, mm. and we're all going to wake up in heaven as bodies. So why would we not believe that we're a body? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's because the only thing that we've known. Exactly. And the body itself reinforces to us because it gets sick. Of course we're a body. We wouldn't get sick if I wasn't a body. We wouldn't get sick. Body dies. Of course you're a body. Do you know? But the one thing that I say to people, God creates only like himself. Mm -hmm. Okay? 
God, if God created something unlike himself, then he, therefore he wouldn't be God. Why would he do that? It would really need to be a sick God to create something very unlike himself. Mm -hmm. So what I say to people is, right, you know, if God creates only what is eternal and immortal, okay, what does that mean God has created here? Tell me something that's eternal and immortal here in this reality. And there's nothing. So what is that telling you? God didn't create here. God has got nothing to do with it. So then that's when people start to get a little confused and a little defensive, you know, because they go back to it. Of course God did it like the Bible says so or this says so or the body says so. Like So these are all defenses within this physical uh, universe, within this physical uh, level of consciousness. Mm. Now, these are all levels of consciousness. From here down, is all levels of consciousness. And it's in these levels of consciousness that we experience our realities, mm. okay? So basically, that takes us down. Now, that is the fall, the separation into the, the, uh, the illusion of the physical world, okay? So people say to me then, right, what happens? This is down the ladder as Jesus describes in the course. So what about going up the ladder? It's, you know, this is the ego who takes us down the ladder and the course, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, will take us back up the ladder. So I'll just take a quick run through, right, how all of the dynamics of all of this changes, mm -hmm. right? The symbolism of it all changes going back up the ladder, mm -hmm. okay? So here we are in the body. So what happens when we lay the body aside, when the physical body dies, what happens? We first of all, right, become conscious of spirit within the mind, okay? And basically everything above this line here is heaven. We're conscious about, of something that's greater than everything else that yeah. we've known, which is physical reality. Yeah, well the, the Bible calls it, you know, you could call it the soul. Yes. Which is eternal. Okay. And you can use soul, you can use spirit, okay? Uh, the Course tends to use spirit because, you know, uh, that's what God created. And spirit is eternal, it's immortal. And that's what's within us. And that's what God did create. Mm -hmm. Everything that's immortal and eternal, uh, and eternal is what God created. Mm -hmm. So we have this spirit that was in, within us. And when we basically uh, uh, lay the body aside in this physical realm, we go back into spiritual heaven, mm -hmm. okay? And in this spiritual heaven here, the fourth dimension, right, we uh, kind of, basically at that time, we still, we're in a state of peace. Mm -hmm. It is so beautiful. It's just almost like divine heaven, mm -hmm. okay? And it's absolutely a real state of beauty, beauty. And, but there's a part of us that knows that we're perfect. Mm -hmm. And there's a part of us that knows that we're, there's an imperfection, mm -hmm. okay? And that imperfection is the guilt that we had within us. Mm -hmm. So basically, we have been coming here for centuries, reincarnating, having different experiences, okay? We're having different lessons and everything, and we have done this for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, we get fed up with it. We this say, is what the Buddhists call the cycle of incarnation. Yes. yes. Of birth and death. So, so basically, you know, there comes a, a moment in time when we say, right, I've had enough of this. I want to go home. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's the call to the Holy Spirit, to Jesus, to God, to say, right, show me the way home. Yeah. Okay. So what happens is. In this lifetime, say for yourself, you're doing your forgiveness lessons, mm -hmm. you relinquish your judgments, okay? You, you go into total shared interests and you make all your relationships holy, mm -hmm. okay? When you go back into spirit, you don't come back down here again this time. What happens is you move up to the higher self, right? Okay? And then you have the, the Christ, which it's is because you've one seen the tricks of the ego at this level, yes, you have to, yeah completed all your lessons, yes. which obviously and, yeah. and basically, I'm doing whatever yeah. you've done in the first place. Yeah, so basically what you're doing is now you're choosing against the ego, okay? And like I explained to you earlier, Ken, you know, the, the, the problem, right, is not guilt. The problem is not fear. The problem is not the ego. The problem is not sin. The problem is not projection, victim, victimizer, okay? The problem is choice because everything else is an illusion. So how can an illusion be a problem, okay? The only problem is choosing, okay? We choose the ego. 
we choose to project, we choose to feel guilty, we choose to feel sinful. Mm -hmm. We can, uh, as the Course describes, we can choose again, brother, as Jesus asks us, choose again. So we can choose to be perfect, because we are perfect, but we choose to be imperfect, so we can attain specialness, uniqueness, individuality, mm -hmm. okay? And there'll come a time when we just say, we don't want this anymore. So we choose against it, mm -hmm. okay? And anybody can do this at any time, at any moment. You can choose against the ego. And you can basically do this within an instant. You know, it's that quick you can do this. Mm -hmm. So people kind of get distracted and think, and they have to wait to the day, and have to go up here and see what the crack is, and, you know, and have a think about it, and, you know, it's delaying. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're really putting off the inevitable. You can do this instantaneously now. Anybody can do this, okay? okay? And that's what Jesus came here to show us, that he could do it. He heard only the voice. His final lesson here, as he describes in the Course, was that he basically heard only the voice of the Holy Spirit. And that meant that he only seen the good. He only seen the perfect. He only seen the love in everybody. Mm -hmm. Do you know, he didn't look for imperfection. It wasn't look. It was totally right-minded. It wasn't wrong-minded. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically, what happens is this is called ascension. And the course, Jesus describes that I stand b below God, and this is Christ, and you stand below me. But he didn't say how far below. But we're a good bit below. We're at the bottom of the ladder. Okay. So basically, you know, we we start working our way up again. Now, if you want to come back here. That's fine, no problem. You know, you don't have to do this. But if you want to go home, if you want to wake up, if you want to go back to God, right? if you want total peace in your life, if you want just pure external love in your life, then why wait? You can do this, you know? But there's no problem if you want to mess about and have an order about a crack and play with the cards, have a few drinks and see a few women, and, you know, and so on. like. You know, yeah, well, again, it's your choice. That's your it? choice. You can do it. Like, you know, it's not good. It's not bad. It's just like, you know, that everybody will do this eventually. You know, that's what the Course describes. Yeah. You know, everybody will eventually choose right. Yeah, it's just and a matter of time. It's, it's only a matter of time. time like, so it just depends on how much pain. But usually the people who are choosing right now are the people who are in the most pain. If you're here in the world and you're having a great time, Okay, the last thing that you're going to look at is A Course in Miracles or any spirituality where you're going to attain higher consciousness. You're going to have the crack and you're going to have a good time here, okay? So the Course really is looking at people who are really unhappy, really sad, really depressed, addicted, uh, alcoholics, you name it, so all of the above. And those are the people who are in pain. Mm -hmm. And as we are generally only made, motivated by pain, mm -hmm. okay? Pain is what motivates us. When we're here having a good time, like we don't care, you know, we never look at God. It's only till you have an accident or something goes wrong that we turn to God and say, "Please, God, help us." Okay, but when we're having a great time, nobody's concerned about God at all, like you know. So basically, that's the the roles of ascension. There's one diagram I want to finish on this, right? And this is the levels of time. Okay, now. Jesus describes this perfectly within the Course, and this fits in perfectly within this template of, uh, of uh, uh, levels, okay? Now, in heaven, okay, there's zero time, because there's a time. Time doesn't exist. Time doesn't exist. But within our dream, right, when we uh, attain consciousness, mm -hmm. Jesus describes it as the tiny tick of time. Mm -hmm. And here, I have described it as one Planck second, mm -hmm. okay? And tell us what a Planck second is. A Planck second basically is the millionth of a millionth of a millionth of a millionth of a second. It's the, f it's the smallest fraction that it's scientists can observe? Yes, it's, 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 it's a quantum, basically. Right, it's a quantum of time. Of time, right? And, and this is only a new phenomenon coming up, coming up, has come into science, but that's how, you know, we could describe what happened in the course. And what I mean by this, right, just to give you an identification, right, if you think of this as a yo-yo, okay, and I go like this and back up to the floor, yeah. okay, that's how quick the separation happened. And a millionth of a millionth of a millionth of a millionth of a second. Just like that, okay? But when we started to drop to here, Okay, time was introduced 
and now it starts to go slow, slow, slow. The further we go down, it goes slower, 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 slower. slower. Amazingly, this is again a, a concept in Inception, isn't it? Yes, yes. And I have direct experience in this because I had uh, experiences outside of space and time. So from my reality to my experience, both were a massive differences in time. So basically what happens is here, right, in Christ it's one second, in the higher self-consciousness it's one day, in the spirit it's one year, and here in the physical universe it's a thousand years. But of course here you're just giving us a, an analogy, yeah? it's not like exactly Yeah, I, I have the exact figures but I'm just using this for simplicity because okay. I didn't want a number of digits. Sure. But because you can have this, all right? Because, you know, any good scientist will work this out because you have zero here and you have 14 billion from here to here. So you have to start and you have to finish, okay? So, and the other thing is science has now proved that if you travel at the speed of light, okay, say for seven years, mm -hmm. okay, 500 years, all sure. have passed. The theory and that's, of relativity. Yeah. Yes, that's traveling at the speed of light. Now remember, we are light beings. Okay, and we are much finer than the light that's in the physical world. Okay, so basically, the time again. There's another uh, another multiplication onto that. Okay, because what we see as light here is artificial light. Mm -hmm. Jesus describes who we are, we're not artificial light. This is an artificial physical light that we see out of ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are a more, much more, how do you mean, pure form of light, yeah. which is basically, so basically if you work it in here, so that means, uh, Jesus says in the dream, he was here 2,000 years ago, okay? And he says, when I walk, everyone will walk, right? So let's look at that. When Jesus came into the dream, Jesus came in here from Christ consciousness, mm -hmm. okay? And he <coughs> was basically walking about here 2,000 years ago with Christ consciousness awareness. So he knew about here, he knew about here, he knew about here, he was awakened here, he was awakened here, and he was awakened here, okay? And when Jesus awoke here into Christ, okay, that happened exactly two seconds ago because it that's the density of the drag of the kick if you look at inception, say for example. Okay? What took two thousand years here takes two seconds here. Okay? So when Jesus woke, we're just this is why the planet's starting to waken up now two thousand years later. One second, two seconds, we're starting to wake up. Okay? That's interesting. So basically this is when he when because when we were all here as separated parts and because Christ is the pure oneness of the sonship, mm -hmm. okay, that when one part of the sonship awakens of its oneness, all of it has to awaken. Mm -hmm. But the drag of time and the density of time and the levels down to here, okay, we still kind of believe that we're separated. You know, we haven't caught up with the time, but the time's coming. And this is why it's inevitable now that everybody will wake up because Jesus has woken up the sonship here. So, when you basically waken from here, this disappears. Then this disappears. Then this disappears. And what you're left with then is here. And this is where the Course describes that when uh, the sonship become one, right, God takes the final step, mm -hmm. okay, and lifts us back up into heaven. That's when we awaken here, okay? So basically that takes us through kind of the separation, ascension, and the illusion of time. Wow. Okay. And I just want to say it's quite. I mean, on a on a, actually, a, we dream at night, don't we? Yeah. And we all experience this kind of phenomenon of time dilation. Yeah. You know, we have dreams which seem to last for like hours, but yeah. when we wake up, it's like oh, it's two minutes. I mean, not two minutes, like yeah. fifteen minutes or something. Yeah. Yeah. So it's something clearly, there's something going on in yeah. your dreams and yeah. time. Yeah. But uh, there's a there's a there's a true definition to what's happening. You're only remembering the last few seconds of your dream when you before you wake up. Why is that? Because your consciousness was involved. Yes, your consciousness was involved outside of this reality of dream, okay? So as you're coming back, as your consciousness comes in here to start to waken up again, mm -hmm. okay? You're actually coming into the dreaming of this reality. And it's because it's, 
the collective consciousness, okay, made this reality real. That's why it's so physical. Yes. Okay. At nighttime, when you're dreaming, it's your individual dream mm -hmm. consciousness that's uh, making that dream real within you. This is why it's so kind of foggy. This is why it's so kind of you know uh, sometimes it's not very clear. Mm -hmm. You know, it's muddled up. It's you know all over the way. Jesus describes this in the course. Mm -hmm. You know that it's very confused. Yeah. And he says, why would you think that your nighttime dreaming is anything different from the daytime dreaming? Mm -hmm. But when we're dreaming, as uh, Jesus says, the mind never stops creating, okay? Mm -hmm. And on this level, our mind is creating and has never stopped creating, okay? And there's a part of our mind that's in here, okay, that's making dreams, that's creating a different reality, mm -hmm. okay? So what happens is, on this, f when, you, when you're basically dreaming at nighttime, you're going back into your mind, Okay, and now part of your mind is outside of time and space. Um, by the time when your body starts, your what your body physically does is pull your mind back, pull your consciousness out of the mind into the body, mm -hmm. and as it's doing that, it's coming back into the physical. And as you're coming back into the physical, you're coming into this, making this real. So you're kind of going back into the collective consciousness of this dream. Do you know what I mean? Your 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 individual consciousness brings you first to creating mm -hmm. in the mind, and then when you wake up, you're into creating this, the collective consciousness of creating this as your reality like once again, and then you're totally back out of the mind again. So every time you wake up, you're only really dreaming for the last two or three seconds, and it seems 15 minutes, could be an hour, you think you're dreaming all night, mm -hmm. but you're not, you know, mm -hmm. you're basically outside of time and space. Wow. <laughs> so, so, so we can, <laughs> we can Hope you guys cut. enjoy it then. <laughs> Hope your mind is blown by now. <laughs> it's, well, Michael, thank you so much. It's been a very valuable, um, it's been 40 minutes, but um, thank you. And yeah. uh, I, I'm uh, really looking forward to hearing yeah. from you. Yeah, great.